So first things first, uh, Kashama Savant just won her city council seat in uh, Seattle. And uh, why is that a big deal, right? Why, why am I bringing that up? Uh, it's a city council seat that, you know. Uh, well, the reason why this is a big deal is because Amazon poured like half a million dollars, half a million dollars into making sure that this lady would not get into office. He poured a half a million dollars into ensuring that this person would not get into the office and then she won. That's like, we beat that. People did that. People made that sort of shit happen. Um, and I love it that Jeff Bezos, by the way, Kishama Savant, for, for those of you that might not know who she is, she is one of, like, in Seattle, she has spearheaded the fight against Amazon for a long time. Uh, like, she has been, the, she has been, like, Bezos' adversary for a very long time. It's fucking awesome. Uh, and, you know, she's, she's a progressive. She's a, 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 a democratic socialist. She uses the term socialist. Um, and she won. Even though $500,000 was put into um, uh, into levying against her campaign. And this is a trend. I think this is a trend that we're seeing. I do. Uh, because if we go all the way back to the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton put $1.3 billion, $1.3 billion into her campaign to defeat Trump. And she lost she lost, spent $1.3 billion, couldn't go to Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And all Donald Trump had to do was say that he cared about people, right? Like, say that he was going to fight for people and not actually fucking do it, which he's not. He's not actually doing it, right? So she pumped a shit ton of money into her campaign and lost. Uh, I'm not saying that he wasn't funded by a billionaire because he was, uh, Robert Mercer, uh, funded Donald Trump's campaign. Um, but she, you know, Clinton lost after she spent all that kind of money. Same thing with what's going on with the primary now. Um, Tulsi Gabbard is on the rise. She has spent less money than a lot of the other, uh, a lot of her other, uh, opponents. And, uh, and she's on the rise. She's going to be in the November debates. That's a big fucking deal. Uh, but she spent way less money than Kamala Harris, way less money than uh, Kirsten Gillibrand uh, when she left the race. Tulsi still spent less money than Kirsten Gillibrand when Kirsten Gillibrand left the race. She spent less money than Cory Booker because she doesn't have corporate donors, right? She's, uh, she's, she's funded by people. She's funded by... Uh, people that want to support her campaign. So it's a big deal that Shama Savant won despite this outpour of money into her opponents by Jeff Bezos and by a bunch of other corporations. Uh, she brings up an interesting question. I watched this Democracy Now! interview with her and she brings up an interesting question. Should our cities be a playground for the rich? Should they be, right? Like, should, should, they, should these special interests come into these cities and, uh, and put in people into power by putting all this money into this, these people that are, for, that are for, not for the interests of people, but for the interests of corporations, for the interests of the private sector, and, and they get to do whatever they want with these cities? You know, Amazon gets to do whatever they want with, uh, with, with Seattle. And this, what, what this really proved was, guess what? Seattle's not for sale. Seattle's not for sale. I'm so fucking thrilled that this happened. That's, we basically beat moneyed interest. The people beat moneyed interest. That money interest does not represent democracy is what that's proved. Time and time again, this gets proved, by the way. Time and time again, this gets fucking proved. It's incredible. 
So Savant fought back uh, against Amazon and big real estate companies. Big real estate companies also put money into her opponents, into making sure that she's not elected. Why? Because uh, Shama Savant is a, uh, is, a, is a socialist that believes uh, in um, fair pay for, for employees, $15 minimum wage, that uh, she wants to take care of the workers. She's, she's about taxing big businesses, right? Making sure that big businesses pay their fair share. Actually help the cities that they're going to do business in. So if Amazon wants to come into your cities and not pay any taxes, they could do that. Had Kashama Savant lost. <clears throat> so now, they, now they're going to lose even more money. And the media was a big problem too, right? The Seattle media was a big problem. Uh, and she point because someone someone points out that the the media's role was integral in capitalism. It's integral, and you can see that. You can see how it's integral in capitalism, right? Anybody that comes out and talks about uh, fighting for the people, fighting for a fifteen dollar minimum wage, which I do think that should be longer. I'll, I'll get into that in a bit later. But uh, fighting for uh, taxing corporations and um, you know helping small businesses. Um, and uh, making sure that unions are strong and making sure that they have the right to strike and just for anything that people stand for, anybody that fucking fights for that, the media will come out and they'll either, uh, they'll either you know, kind of sully the name of socialism and uh, uh, call them a Russian, call them an asset, have all this propaganda put out against them because the media is bought and paid. Jeff Bezos owns a media company. Jeff Bezos owns Washington Post. The Seattle Times pushed back against uh, Kashama Savant's tax structures and all her tax ideas that she wanted to put forward. And not only that, but they were using attack ads and mailers. Old school coming after fucking... So oh, the so socialism can't handle the post. Here it comes. We're going to take down socialism by snail mail. Oh, we'll lick those stamps. Because licking stamps is what capitalism does. Well, capitalism will uh, will, will pay somebody uh, for for licking those stamps, and when they get uh, uh, toxic uh, poisoning by uh, ingesting too much of the glue, they 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 will say, "Well, that's your fault. That's your problem. That's what capitalism will do." And she defeated these smears, and we saw that again with the Tulsi Gabbard thing, right? They tried to smear her, and every every tactic that they had, the media that that uh, that they could throw out there didn't work it just boosted her even more more and more people found out the who the you know who, the, who who was telling the truth and who wasn't telling the truth incredible i did a whole uh, whole video about that basically what this proves is that progressives that stand for socialist principles uh to correct the corruption and capitalism can come together uh, and, uh, and, and defeat moneyed interests. That's what this proves. It proves that, that when we put some of our differences aside and realize who the actual enemy is, who is, who is actually not on our side, on, on anybody's side, despite your, uh, despite your, your, uh, your identity, despite uh, where you stand, you know, what political affiliation you have, when we all come together and realize that it is a small group of people that have actively used the media, used moneyed interests, used these special interest tactics to fight against somebody, we're, nobody's going to fucking stand for it. And people are going to come together and they're going to put somebody in power that actually represents them, that are part of who they are. Shama Savan is that. And, this is, and she's not the only person that uh, uh, ran on this socialist campaign and won. Uh, I just did an interview with Brandon Betts in Lansing, Michigan, and he just got on the city council as well. And it's a very interesting interview, and, and I'm not going to spoil a whole lot to it, but one of the things that he says is that he is one of the people. He's not, he's not some um, uh, you know, politician or, or rich person. that No, he's a working class person. So he's, he benefits only when the people benefits because he is part of the people that's who's getting into office 
which is fucking awesome. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. If you enjoyed the content of this video, there is a very good chance that you probably will enjoy my live stand-up comedy. I'm going to be touring all across the country, so if you are in Atlanta, Charlotte, North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Champaign, Illinois, Bloomington, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, I will be coming to your city very soon. You can go get your tickets to come see my live stand-up comedy over at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I hope to see you guys there. Thanks for checking out the video, and we'll see you on the road.